All right, you got it? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, guys, I'm gonna show you guys how to do a sunburst with tape. Uh, that's, what, that's what most people call it. Um, this panel here is kind of misshaped and stuff, so it's gonna be a little more difficult to get the pattern in there. But what you wanna do is you wanna find your corner and you wanna put your tape, a piece of this uh, blue fine line tape and go find the corner, but you wanna go about midways of your panel, like split the panel in half with a line like that, okay? All right, that's gonna be your center point line for your sunburst pattern. And all you do on these is you try to work off of this corner every time. So you wanna come down here to this corner and try to lay your next piece of tape on there and do a, I don't know, ever how wide you want your bursts apart, just put you another line across like that, that way. And then you come back down here on this one and go right above it and go right back on top of your tape again and go right above this one and try to do another pattern that's about the same as that one. You don't have to be perfect, but you know, it's whatever, whatever you got, you know, you want or how wide or thick you want them. Then you work back off your corner again and you kind of do another one, try to keep them the same as the last one, like this. And you come back up top, work off the corner again. And it's, it's cool if you keep your uh, tips on the bottom kind of the same down here. I'll show you a little trick for that when we get done with this that makes it kind of look, looks cool at the bottom. Um, but you just kind of keep putting those panels in, you work off that. So you, you get down to your very last one, which will be this one on this one. And then the top will be, should be right there. But the way, see how this panel is kind of funky shaped. So we got this dead zone here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put another one, but it's only gonna catch in the corner over there. Whereas that way we still have a fan in the corner to where it don't look nappy. <laughs> All right. Well, this is the basics for a sunburst. And what you do is you go down here at the bottom and go take you and make this and find your points and go right above your points and make you a little round circle like that. And that gives you the base for your, all your things to come out from under. So all of our sunbursts are gonna work off of this, off of this little round circle, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take, let's put us a piece of tape to keep this from bleeding, okay? All right, now what you wanna do on these is you wanna take a, a piece of masking tape and lay right on the blue line and you want to take and just take and do you a shade right in the bottom, right next to the thing, and all the way out, and make it as dark as you want it. You want it kind of, you want it to show, so you kind of get it kind of dark. And then you just take and pull that one. You try not to pull your tape off. Don't work nothing anyway. So it's kind of sticky when you first do the first one, so it takes a second for the it to wear off a little bit. So basically you come with your next one, tape it up. And then you do another shade line. All right. When you get up in here on the top, kind of step up next to your blue for your line. Like that, and come down to your tip. Get it as dark as you want it. We've been doing it pretty dark on this spot where it show it real good. So up in here, you can actually bring your brush down and kind of Fade it on out if you want to, to give you a little more effect. And then, uh, basically just keep going up. That's it, and just kind of, you get out here, you just back, back your brush up, and I think I might be out of paint, guys. No, I just got that song. Okay. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I think my whole mind just stopped up on my, not to cook. It's actually a little funny. Anyway, just want to dust it out, kind of, at the tip of your fans, you want to open them up a little bit, and make them come down a little. Um, Okay. 
I'm having a hard time here. Anyway, I was hoping to get this done and show it to you the way it looks like I've been taped. What do you think of that looking good? Kind of gives you a, a fan effect when you put a little wider at the end out of the tip of the sunburst. Everybody does these differently. But basically, you just follow the blue line and you get up top to spring your brush back where it does a more of a fan pattern and I'll give you a little color on there. I'll have a few more here. And then that's my tape up. What you're doing by putting this masking tape on top of this one is keeping the for making double lines because if you don't put the masking tape you'll it'll have a it's almost like a pinstripe line. So you gotta stay away from that that bottom one as you're doing this one. Try to keep it as close to the blue lines you can when you're putting your shadow in there. And like I say, you just go back here, kind of down to do the, the burnout, like a little shade effect. up here so it's only like a little bit of the of the last one to do so you know I have to go to right there on I mean, it is it just makes it look continuous it looks like you didn't just stop off with nothing there so kind of gives you the effect and so you can do this a bunch of different ways but if you go down here and just trim these out you can go in here and cut this right next to this little fan thing here and just cut around them the tape, be real careful. And uh, take the straps off that way. We have a fun sunburst looking effect here, hopefully. I think I'd be looking good. Okay. Oh, cool. That's what I liked here. All right. A lot of times when you trim those, it leaves a little ragged line. So if you want to, you can just come in here and take this and go like with that to clean it up a little bit. But all you gotta do then is just take your brush and go in here and just put you a, like a, a line like this right down next to the the bottom and kind of fade it up a little bit so that gives you that effect of a beginning of a sunburst so that's kind of what that does and then you can go back and add a little more shadow in there and bring it up a little more so I'm kind of paint it out and like I say you can go in here and knees and put a little bit more if you want a little more knees to get it at that but that's how you do a sunburst on the gas tank. All right. All right, guys. Well, this is what it looks like. We've untaped this one side to kind of just give y'all an uh, idea of what we had to do to really make this pop. So we've got all our artwork and the center panels in and everything. So you got all these pinstripes where we got taped off or where they'll stay silver. But if you don't, put some shadowing around everything, it don't, it don't have no depth to it. So what I do is I start off on the panels on the inside and I go right at the orange and I'll go around the panel and go right around the panel like this. 
you need to kind of stay right on that orange stripe. And you want to make this darker than your actual artwork. So this needs to be pretty dark. Like that. And if you'll see that, start bringing that out, it actually brings the artwork up a little bit to where you, it looks like it's kind of in a panel. It really shows up more when it goes under candy. But that gives you that 3D effect, kind of. You see how much that brought that out? And then you, what I like to do is on these stripes here, I'll go usually between these two and really blacken this stripe out right here. I'll go around it, I'll go around it three or four times trying to really just darken it out completely. So that way it's got a black, kind of a black stripe between the candies. That gives you a, it makes sure when you untape this, it, it's hard to tell right now, but we'll, I'll show you when we get, we'll get the first candy on there. There is uh, two different color candies going on in this box, so we'll have to shoot one and let it dry. We've been waiting overnight before we put another color on because the, it just gives the time for the candy to cure off good and um, in the inner coat clear dry real good. That way we don't pull nothing and all that good stuff. But basically, you want to go around several times so that gets really dark like that when you see it's almost black. Okay, now on top of this line, I usually go on it and I'll go outside of it and put a stripe. I did the shadow around it. This is enough to make it pop out. It gives, you a, it gives it more of a 3D effect. I know you're probably thinking, that's a lot of times to go around a panel. But I promise you, it's worth it in the end. The time we spend right here will make all the difference when the, paint, when the candy hits it. Because it'll give you a really nice 3D, makes your panels just basically jump off the back. Makes your candies richer, and it just makes everything look better. Time you spend sometimes is well worth it sometimes. But you can see how dark that brought that out. It's a lot darker. And I like, like I say, I want that stripe between that orange and blue pen stripe. I want that almost completely black. We want to hit a steel be green or whatever color candy we put. Let's give it away. <laughs> but anyway, it, it'll, uh, but it uh, just, it'll just make everything more, more vibrant and make everything pop like it's these honeycombs should be able to tell it real good with these we could shut it right now it should show up pretty good this is just a drop shadow basically but i like to put it like right next to the stripe as tight as i can to really make it stick up And these shadows don't have to be perfect. No. So if you get out of line, it's okay. Can you see how much that brought that panel out to that foreground? If you want some more darker spots than these, you can go in there on the bottoms of them and put you some more shading in just to make them pop more. If they're not dark as you want them, so it's not a big deal. It's like on any of it. You, it's all according to how much time you want to spend airbrushing or how dark you want it. But the, uh, like I say, you go back in here again with a stripe again. And fill the center in with black. So you want to get that dark. As possible. Yeah, 
I got one of the more stuff like this on my airbrush and stuff. We'll post some videos. Just let us know if you like them or not. You can comment on them and, you know. There's some really good young airbrush artists that uh, is doing bikes on the area. I've seen a bunch of guys doing them. And it's always cool to see. There's no two people does the bike the exact same way. I don't like to copy anybody's work, so. Uh, I wish I'd do something different, but it's hard on as many different paint jobs has been done over the years. It's hard to be not to get, you know, something that looks like some something that's made done, so. But we always try to do a little different. Think outside the box, if you will. Basically, just want it to pop, so. Your shaving this is a, is a big part of it because <laughs> you think you have it too dark and then you'll go in and uh, once you get your candy on you'll be like man i wish i to just put just a little bit more of your darkness on there to really make it rich because when you untape these stripes it really shows how much time many times you went around on the stripes for sure so basically that's what you do. You just go around and shade everything in dark. And then after that's done, we'll go back and put our candy in on these panels here. We'll candy these first, let them dry. We'll mask all this off and we'll do our next color candy on these. But we'll let these dry first after we, we candy these. Then we'll have to untape the, again without pulling the tape off and then we'll mask the insides of these up and then we'll put our other cut of candy on. It's a big process, but it's it's kind of cool. All right, guys, we got it in candy now. I shot the gold candy in here last night before I can't went in and everything, but I put the, it's, it's supposed to be a teal green. It looks emerald in, in pictures, but it's actually a teal green you put it outside. But I figured I'd come in here and untape some of this. I sprayed this up. Ready? Mm -hmm. I sprayed this green a few, a few minutes ago. It's a teal green candy. It looks kind of like an emerald in pictures, but I figured you guys would like to see some of the untaping that way. You can kind of get an idea of how the airbrush work looks. When you're pulling it off and everything. You have to be kind of careful when taping this stuff because when you set, let one set with uh, tape on it for a while, it tends to want to pull the paint. The stripes are the most, which you gotta be the most careful with. But there's some of the sunburst, you can kind of see it better now. With these little stripes, you basically have to get your blade underneath them and uh, pick them up, and you wanna kind of pull them next to each other or down close to the material. That way it doesn't try to lift your uh, paint. I hope that one's kind of a paint. It's pulling. And sometimes you have to do some repairs. So sometimes the stuff just does not want to stay laid down. And you get a little bleed spot here and there. It's part of paint work. You never know what you're gonna get. It's like a box of chocolates. <laughs> Those are the straps I had taped off on just the bare metal, metal flake where we had uh, cleared in. So now you can kind of see them when you uh, start pulling the tape off and everything.
get more of an idea of what we're working with there. Let's see how our honeycombs come out. Don't knock the tank off the stand. Right here. Huh? Yeah. Anyway, this is uh, the honeycomb. I checked it last night. what that looks like. Like I say, it's uh, it's all just layers with a candy paint job. Kind of just uh, have to take your time and, and just layer it up and layer. And it takes a lot of clear coat at the end too to bury all the stripes and stuff because you really don't want to be able to feel Feel the stripes. So what I usually do is I'll I'll take this after we get done it, get done taped and everything, and I'll put about uh, four to five coats of clear on it. And most of the time you'll have to let it set and dry, and then come back and take some mortar paper, sand off the top layer, kind of smooth out the stripes and everything and then go in and uh, put some more clear to actually smooth everything up. But there's kind of like, you can kind of see the depth of the paint now with the shadows and the, the blacks around the stripes and stuff. It kind of gives you an idea of what it's, uh, what it's gonna look like. Let's do some of the stuff up here. I've got some fish scales. I think we've got the lotus blossom scales or the petals here, so. Let's see what they look like. I've never actually done some of these, so. We'll do one side for y'all guys. The inner coat clear is kind of sensitive, so I actually let this dry all night, but it's still, if you could see it, it still makes marks in the, in the clear, the, inner coat even after drying all, a whole night. So I like to use, most of the time, I like to use a base maker to, to shoot the flake in. But uh, LJ likes to, he likes to buy the inner coat when I do one for him. So it's good either way. We just need some kind of material to actually spray the, the candies in. Cause candy's like a, it's a concentrate, so it's real thick when you, when you actually put out the can, so you have to thin it 50-50 most of the time, so. There is our lotus petals, almost here. It's a couple of spots. that and then we'll go back here to our what do we call these Taj Mahal you want to this code it's super hot to shop right now guys Spots in the summertime is not nice.
This is my buddy John back here. Turn around and get a picture going. From Distinctive Designs, I've already got a metal fire shop right down the street from us. Does great work. You need some welding done, come see. We want to plug everybody in our videos. Right, there's your Taj Mahal. Now you can kind of get an idea of the, the paint and everything, but I'll let him take this and put some clear on it and I'll have Jen take a pick with some clear and put on the video. But that's the video of airbrushing the candy paint job. This is more low rider style. It's been out for a long time, but they're doing these FXRs and Dinas with a lot of these kind of paint jobs now. So it's hard to see the metal flake in here, but this has got mini flake in it. It's, it's full of these guys. It's really good outside in the daylight. So that's it, folks. Oh,